Starting a startup is not for everyone. When I hear the word startup, I also hear the word sacrifices. There will be a lot of things that you have to put aside in the early years, including your demanding hobbies, comfortable paycheck, most of your social life with colleagues, weekly weekends when you can just put aside work-related thoughts. Your brain is going to be thinking about your startup 24-7 in the shower, in the toilet, so learning to shut your brain is itself a skill to master. I know you know all of that, otherwise you won't watch this video, but hearing it from someone who's on the same board and playing the same game can make you realize you're not alone. I'm myself a solo founder and have been building my startup Sevayu, a location-based language exchange app connecting natives nearby in person for the past four years as a side hustle and one year full-time. Here are some lessons I've learned throughout the years that you should be aware of before starting a startup. Say goodbye to your weekends and thanks God it's Fridays. Let me start with this. Work-life balance doesn't exist when you're building a startup from the ground up, let alone when you're a solo founder. People who say so are generally actually way ahead already in their startup journey. If you treat your weekends and the dozen of paid annual vacation days as the life part in the work-life balance, then you should rethink it wise before starting a startup. Back when I was an employee in a corporate, like many people, Fridays and the weekends are the time when I was looking forward to and when life actually finally begins. Knowing that people are enjoying their Saturdays and Sundays while you're stuck in your tiny room fixing a weird bug in your app is both extremely depressing but also build characters because you know that you're laying that brick toward your freedom in a distant future. But it shouldn't be that depressing if you're enjoying what you're doing, right? When doing a startup, it's not about doing what you love, but to learn how to love or at least appreciate what you do. It sounds almost cheesy, but overcoming a difficult task in an area where you are not familiar with feels much more satisfying than doing something you like, but that you learn nothing from it. I'm myself a developer and nothing makes me more happier than opening my VS Code editor and adding a new feature that nobody asked for. And just having the thought of having to review a financial legal agreement terms give me a headache. But hey, it's the path I chose, so I just buy the bullet and just go through it. You need to learn to treat your startup work not just as work, that is a separate compartment of your life that only serves the purpose of bringing food on the table. Instead, it could be part of your identity to build your life around it. And when you realize that your perspective on work-life balance will change forever, it will just be life and how you decided to spend it. Startup life doesn't stop during weekends. When going full-time on my startup, I sometimes appreciate more my weekends over the weekdays because I spend most of my working hours in coffee shops and in Tokyo, most shops are overcrowded during the weekends and I can get a seat and end up wandering around for hours just to find a place to zone in. Also, weekends are the timing when most of your friends prepare plans to hang out together but sometimes you just want or have to get some works done. Despite what we say to ourselves, nurturing relationships with your friends or loved ones is still very crucial. Having to refuse an invitation to a funny activity can be tiring mentally. Most of your friends won't get it when you refuse the invitation to a karaoke party or a Saturday night because you want to redesign your product landing page. Notice that I said want to redesign and not have to because if you don't impose duties to yourself, who will do so? Juggling between allowing yourself to forget about your startup to chill a little bit during some weekends and grinding on a Saturday evening is itself a skill and mindset to master. Of course, you're gonna have time to enjoy, but it will not just be clocked at the same time as most people, and that's totally okay. You can take an entire afternoon to relax in the Japanese hot spring on a Tuesday and catch up on work afterward until midnight. Work when you're most productive and rest when your brain is drained. 9 to 5 are just industry norms that most companies adopt to have a baseline for everyone. But hey, you don't want to be everyone, right? The second thing to be aware of is that not having a sense of urgency will kill your startup. If you ask me for a word to describe startup, I would say uncertainty. Getting that uncertainty even a little bit closer to certainty is your day-to-day -day mission. Everyone talks about goal and milestones and while it's important to have some in mind, the reality is that in the startup world, the only constant is change. There's a famous line in the Facebook growth playbook during the early years that says, six months or 30 years, there's no point in having a five-year plan in this industry with each step forward the landscape you're working changes. Works never stop. There will always be a bug to fix, another email to send, another newsletter to read and break down, and another video script to write. Quitting your job to build your startup also emphasizes that sense of urgency, and that's a good thing. There's a powerful force when being pushed against the world to make things happen and not treating your startup as just a hobby. When your startup starts receiving outside investment, it's not just you, but now you have external expectation to meet. You'll be tempted at many occasions just to delay today's 
touch to tomorrow because come on it's sunny outside the cherry blossom is in full bloom now in japan by all means enjoy the cherry blossom if you're in japan in spring but always keep in mind that while you're jogging your competitors are running startups world is not a place where you'll be graded at the end of the semester it's a fierce world filled with bigger players competitors copycats disrupted market changes that can blow away your startup anytime i mean how many ai startups or chatbot startups are disappearing or will disappear with the invasion of chat gpt and mid journey a weird thing about building a startup is that everything is important but nothing seems urgent if you're not the one setting urgency flag on your day-to-day -day task then nobody will before you realize someone else will eat your lunch and you'll be back to your corporate job if you can't get it done by the end of the weekends just get it done by friday night and move on to work on something else during the weekend paul graham from yc also mentioned the fact that most startups are default dead this is often cited as a reminder of the high failure rate of startups and the challenges that entrepreneurs face in the early stage of building a company the phrase default dead suggests that most startups are doomed to fail unless they take deliberate and strategic action to avoid failures startups face a wide range of challenges from lack of funding to competition to product market fit and that many of these challenges can be difficult to overcome it's not mean to discourage entrepreneurs from pursuing their dreams or starting new ventures but rather it's mean to encourage them to approach their work with a sense of urgency and focus and to take concrete steps to mitigate their risk of failures by recognizing that startup success is not guaranteed entrepreneurs can be more realistic and strategic in their approach and can work harder to overcome that obstacle that stand in their way have you ever heard of the story of the frog dying boiled it's a fable that tells that a frog placed in a pot of warm water as the water gradually heats up the frog doesn't notice until it's too late you can sum up most startup stories failure with the frog story my startup is no exception so i'd better follow my own advice so instead be the frog who noticed the rising temperature and jumps out of the pot to safety take control of your life prioritize what matters most don't wait until it's too late to make the necessary changes start today and create a sense of urgency for the things that are truly important to you make important things urgent and work on it another thing to be aware of is that you're gonna be poor for a while like the saying goes the three most harmful addictions are heroin carbohydrates and a monthly salary if eating japanese cup noodles again like your student times is your thing why not start a startup to reach ramen profitability i quit my well-paid job at microsoft japan a year and a half ago to go all in for my startup seva you sometime i learned later on is that you're gonna be paying a lot of taxes when quitting your corporate job i don't know how things work in other countries but in japan the taxes you pay are from the previous year and not the current year those taxes include income tax inhabitant taxes house insurance pension and so on so when quitting your job you'll have a trailing one year and half worth of tax to pay even though you don't get any money from your startup so when i quit i save up to around one year and a half ish worth of runway at the time of this recording i still have left a few months of taxes to pay that just shortens the runway by a few months and i had to withdraw my corporate retirement savings plan money that i wasn't even aware of the existence but it happens that i fulfill all the requirement for early withdrawal i didn't even have an ounce of a hesitation when withdrawing i mean why thinking about your retirement in 40 years when you know that you'll be a millionaire in the next 10 years with your startup we're not talking about a huge amount of money here just extending the runway by a few months now that i receive outside investment for my startup and approaching the end of my savings i need to give myself a bit of monthly salary to pay the rent and food to survive it won't be as addictive as heroin or carbohydrate though so prepare some cash aside before quitting your job and prepare to not have any money flow in for a while while your friends working at corporate job get promoted upgrade their salary along with their lifestyle just don't be jealous because keep in mind that you're not playing the same game accept your choice and just live with it you will be poor for a while but the experience and financial lesson you will learn along the way are invaluable and will benefit both to you personally and to your startup you will learn how to budget how to be resourceful to be scrappy and to be frugal all those personal finance skills can also serve when running a company you will be able to spend wisely the outside investment you receive from investors being poor can actually make you more creative and innovative in problem solving you learn how to stretch resources and reduce costs which can benefit your startup in the long run it also helps you to stay focused by prioritizing resources and investments while it may not be ideal being poor can actually be a valuable learning experience for entrepreneurs embrace the challenges stay resourceful and keep pushing until you succeed
it. Of course, I miss the nice trips and nice restaurants. Not saying that I don't go at all on smaller and cheaper trips, but that's the price that you have to pay. Another thing to be aware of is that you're going to be your own boss, but also be your own slave. Every single customer will now be your boss. The nice thing about working in a corporate is that mostly your manager will almost take on any responsibility for the project outcome. If a project fails, well, be it a pat in the back and a few millions of dollars burned for the project initiation, then everyone moves on. For your startup, that can be life or death. Nobody but you will have to take on heavy burden. That will be the difference between staying in the game a bit longer or having to go back to your corporate desk. You will have to work for long hours, make difficult decisions and constantly adapt to new challenges. Your success or failure will depend entirely on your own efforts. You will need to be prepared for the mental and emotional toll of being your own boss. The lack of structure can also completely destroy some individual's motivation. The good and bad news about running a startup is that you have to structure your own hours, days, weeks, months, quarter, year, everything by yourself. That demands a lot of discipline and above all stamina to stay for the long run. Unlike in a corporate setting where there's often a clear structure and hierarchy in place, running a startup can be a chaotic and unpredictable experience. There's no safety net and the success or failure of your company rests entirely on your own shoulders. This can be both exhilarating and terrifying because on the one hand you have complete control over your own destiny. To be honest, I've never felt that alive. But on the other hand, you are constantly under pressure to show up every single day. You'll become slave to your own calendar, to your to-do list, the never-ending backlogs in your project management software, and just looking at it will make you depressed. The last thing to be aware of is that you're gonna be lonely. Like they said, it's lonely at the top, but see you there. Well, I wanted to end the video like this to sound cool, but it's not gonna happen. Your surrounding will have no clue what the reality of startup is and the millions of things you keep for yourself in your brain that keep you awake at night. It is a lonely game and most founders will give you advice too but that will be generic including this one. Only you know your startup and all the stuff and issues happening at any given time. Learn to embrace that. Sounds cheesy but like Naval Ravikant said, exceptional people are built in solitude. But that doesn't mean that you have to be completely alone in your journey. Surround yourself with a support system that understands and supports your goals. Find mentors, advisors, other entrepreneurs who have been through similar experiences. Share your story with your friends, join a startup community or network. Attend events and conferences to learn from others and make connections. And most importantly, having the support of your family feels like you are standing on giant shoulders. My mom used to watch daily some of my YouTube videos to help increase the view count before I told her not to do so because it might confuse the YouTube algorithm or something. Anyway, my girlfriend is also incredibly supportive Spending time with her keep me sane. We just enjoy the journey in the hard times and the good ones. Sewayu also starts expanding the team and our first member is also really committed and helps with this video editing and without whom you won't get to see these videos. And most importantly, take care of yourself and make it a priority. Exercise, clear your mind, have long walks, spend your time intentionally and simply take breaks to recharge. You can build many startups, but you only have one body to live with. You can put that in my future Wikipedia page. All right, enough of melodramatic punchlines. If you want to know about the struggle and lessons I've learned over years when building a social consumer app, please check out this video here. Follow me on Instagram for bite-sized short videos of the behind the scene of building a startup as a solo and foreign founder in Japan and seeing me turning from a startup founder to a movie director. I release a weekly video on this channel until Sevayu IPO. So click the subscribe button and also hit that bell notification because my mom even said she doesn't notice my new release videos. Maybe the same happens to you and you don't want to miss out leave a comment below if you are playing the same startup game thanks for watching and see you in the next one bye